I will start this session on, on the lignin valorization uh, by talking about uh, my passion, this spherical colloidal uh, lignin particles, and uh, keeping in mind this uh, theme of this uh, um, symposium, I will talk about the interactions uh, from two different angles. So first, I will talk about the interactions that affect uh, the properties of these colloidal particles, and in the second part, then uh, how these interactions with other, with the media or with other polymers affect their uh, performance in materials. So I think uh, I don't have to say many words about lignin, but so far we have talked about cellulose, hemicellulose, and water. So uh, lignin is, uh, is a really cool material, and it's, uh, it's a side product, so there's a lot of it available. And it's, of course, a renewable carbon source. Uh, in, in the wood, in the tree, it actually performs excellently. It's a binder. It can also like uh, uh, protect the cellulose from, from water and also from some um, uh, microbial attacks. But then when you uh, take it out from the, it's uh, performing less well. And there's been a lot of uh, research how, how to make it perform better. So why is lignin valorization so difficult? Uh, well, first of all, um, when, you talk, when I talk with industrial uh, representatives, they always say that they want to have something uh, that is reproducible and always looks the same, always have the same molecular weight, always have the same chemistry and, and the same structure. And well, this is not uh, something uh, typical for lignin. Lignin it has different uh, structure uh, depending on from what uh, uh, what is the biological source? Uh, then, when you actually take it as a side product from from the biorefiner, because I think that that is the great thing that we can use the cellulose for other stuff, and then we take something that is so far underutilized and and make great materials out of that. But this, since the pro processes are developed to get the best out of the cellulose fibers, um, the lignin is not always that great. And it's very uh, heterogeneous, and it uh, can be difficult to dissolve or disperse. It can even smell uh, quite badly. And I, I would say, actually, one other thing why lignin hasn't been used so much is due to its excellent uh, energy. Uh, so it's, it has been better to just uh, burn it for energy, and then the, the, the mills can actually be uh, self-sufficient and they can even give energy to the rest, to the community around them but I think uh, this is not sustainable how we think about it today so I would like to actually have a positive handprint in this sense that we would uh, not use lignin for burning but we would use a more sustainable energy source and then we can use lignin in materials and increasing that uh, uh, carbon cycle or have a longer longer carbon cycle for, for the lignin. And one way of doing this is, of course, to add uh, make added value materials from the lignin. And since I find it so complicated, the, the molecule and the structure, I try to uh, simplify it. So, so we, we work with this colloidal lignin particles. And uh, I will talk a bit about the, how they are made and especially about their properties. And making these uh, colloidal lignin particles or lignin nanoparticles, whatever you want to call them, uh, they actually uh, have many advantages over the crude lignin in many applications. So they are ec excellent stabilizers in pickering emulsions. Uh, you can make uh, robust uh, coatings that are uh, can protect the the material both from, from sunlight and from, from uh, water. I, I hope you saw uh, Alexander Hens' uh, poster yesterday. He had some uh, examples of how, how these colloidal lignin particles can be used both in coatings and adhesives. And we can also utilize this spherical uh, particle shape for face changing materials and drug, drug carriers. 
So just quickly, how we make the particles, there are a bit different ways uh, how you can uh, prepare this uh, uh, nanoparticles. We do it so that we dissolve the lignin in an aqueous uh, acetone or aqueous uh, THF uh, uh, solvent mixture. Then you just uh, pour this uh, uh, dissolved lignin into uh, water and then particles are spontaneously forming. And these particles are spherical. They have some anionic charge on the surface. So then you get, how do I get rid of that one? Okay. Um, okay, sorry. Um, yes, so, so due to this anionic charge, they, they are uh, stable in the dis aqueous dispersion for many, many, many months. And um, this makes them easier to use. They are easy to disperse now, and uh, they are a bit more uh, reproducible. So you always get these spheres. You maybe not need to uh, bother so much about the exact chemistry there. Uh, you usually have, uh, have some anionic charge on the surface and hydroxyl groups on the surface. And this is something, um, a process that is scalable and uh, we have commercialization ongoing. Um, but of course you want to tune the particles. Uh, so one easy way of tuning the, the, the size of the particles is uh, by the choosing the solvent system. So uh, we have used this aqueous acetone and aqueous THF and we noticed that uh, uh, we get smaller particles if we use aqueous acetone as the solvent before uh, precipitating uh, the particles in, in water and uh, then with the THF. But we were thinking, like, why, why is this? Uh, so we wanted to look into this with, in more detail. And I would say this is all about the interactions in in the system. So we can, but of course, it's not a simple, it's just not one type of interaction. We have the interaction between the organic solvent and lignin, interaction between water and lignin. We have interaction between lignin molecules, and of course, the interactions between the solvents. So all these interactions are governing the particle formation. And uh, there are like, um, Literature are saying also that the molecular weight will, is affecting, so if you have higher molecular weight, you get smaller particles. There are also literature on, on the, that the chemistry of the lignin affects. And of course, this is also due to the interactions in a way. If you have a higher molecular weight, you probably have a bit lower uh, solubility, and then you get uh, smaller particles. And the same thing that uh, if you have more hydrophilicity, the solubility is better, and probably you get a bit larger particles. So, to study, to understand this a bit better, uh, I contacted my colleague, Maria Samalkorpi, and she agreed to do some molecular dynamics simulation uh, to provide some insight into these interactions between lignin and the solvents, and both now uh, between the lignin and the solvent and the anti-solvent. So um, we looked at both kind of the hydrophilic interactions and the hydrophobic uh, interactions. So um, you all know that the water is the best uh, hydrogen bonding agent. Uh, it's now missing actually from here. Uh, but if you read the paper, you see that uh, lignin and water has the highest uh, hydrogen bonding, but then if we compare this uh, uh, acetone and THF, for example, we see that we have slightly higher uh, hydrogen bonding ability of acetone compared to THF. And this is something that hadn't, hasn't been uh, studied before. So usually you think about the organic solvent that, that, that is just interacting with the hydrophobic parts of lignin but actually they can also form hydrogen bonds. So lignin is an amphiphilic molecule, so that's why it, the interactions are a bit more complex, actually. So uh, then we could see that uh, um, with 
DMSO was the one that made the smallest particles. But I would just warn you, before you run away to your uh, lab and start using DMSO as your like your new solvent to make these smaller particles, uh, they are not stable. I don't know exactly why, but uh, I would still say that DMSO is not uh, the way to go. I, I, pref I think that you get much nicer, stable, um, more dense particles with acetone or THF system. Uh, this dioxan what was another that uh, didn't work very well at all, made a bit larger particles, uh, but also less stable. But this, we, we use these different solvents to kind of really understand how the uh, properties of the solvent affects the interactions. And if we still uh, look then at the hydrophobic interactions, so what you Let's not go into the details of, of the molecular dynamic simulations, but what you can see, how you should read this is that uh, the earlier, uh, the smallest the radius here is uh, for this bump, uh, the more, the stronger the hydrophobic interaction between the carbon in the solvent and this uh, uh, benzene rings uh, in, in the lignin arm. So there you can see that uh, DMSO has the strongest hydrophobic interactions. Then uh, next come here, acetone uh, before THF. So now you can see that uh, acetone has stronger interactions uh, with, with the uh, lignin compared to, to THF system. So we think that this is uh, uh, the reason why we get the smaller particles uh, with the aqueous acetone uh, water system. So, so that means that uh, uh, it's uh, slower for the acetone to leave the lignin compared to for the uh, THF to leave the lignin. And that's why uh, uh, you get the smaller particles. So this is basically uh, what's happening is kind of like uh, supersaturation. So uh, you form the nucleus and then uh, we, instead of like the nucleus being bigger, they are kind of uh, aggregating together and forming, forming these uh, particles. So of course, um, there might be, uh, there are also, we cannot uh, uh, say that, or I'm sure that also the solvent water interaction will, will affect how, uh, and viscosity may have an effect but we didn't see any difference in the viscosity whether we have uh, acetone or THF. Then if we still uh, look at this, uh, you have here like model lignin. Now it's L1 and L2 and L3. Next time I, I have a clearer explanation of this also here. So this L1 is a kind of a, a model for the craft lignin and then this uh, uh, L2 is a model for uh, more native lignin, like millwood lignin. And then this uh, L3 is a, a theoretical model with a lot of hydrophilicity. So we, we kind of, because this, we wanted to also see whether this is uh, universal, the effect of the, of the solvent, or if the uh, different chemistry of the lignin affects. So we could see that the, the solvent was, had a stronger effect than, than the lignin chemistry, but of course the lignin chemistry also affected. So if we look here, for example, we always have the highest hydrogen bonding with the most hydrophilic uh, lignin model. Okay, then uh, we contacted Nonappa and we got, the, he helped us to do this electron tomography uh, to actually study the internal morphology of the particles. And this is quite interesting results. First of all, we saw kind of that it, uh, um, it looks homogeneous, so it's kind of a compact structure. Uh, but if you have seen electron tomography of other of polymer uh, particles, they are actually totally smooth. So these are kind of grainy. And this further uh, confirms that we actually have this kind of a small nucleus that then aggregate into a particle. And if we think about this, what we are actually seeing is a, 
quite beautiful hierarchical assembly here. So first, um, the molecules go together to some small molecule assemblies, form the nanoparticles. And if you want to uh, dry these nanoparticles using spray drying, for example, uh, you get this micro-sized particle that is comprised out of many particles. And in the spray dryer, you have the typical, you have a bit that you have the smallest nanoparticles at the surface. And this is what we are also think that, uh, or many people have also written that uh, probably in the, when the nanoparticles are formed, it's the same thing that you first, uh, first the largest molecular weight with the most hydrophobic molecules makes the uh, nucleus. And then on the surface, you have the, the last ones to, to assemble into this uh, particle are the smallest hydrophilic molecules. But of course, uh, we don't only use these uh, unmodified lignin nanoparticles. We, we do modify them for optimal uh, material performance. So one example is, for example, to make them cationic. And this can be done in a kind of all lignin approach. Uh, so adsorbing cationized lignin onto the surface of these lignin nanoparticles. And we found that uh, these uh, cationic lignin particles are very good for emulsion stabilization. And probably uh, due to this, they become, the particles become more amphiphilic, more hydrophilic actually um, with this uh, cation lignin. And also that uh, this, uh, the cationic lignin can, can interact if we have a, like a, uh, an ionic molecule in, in the oil, for example. Um, this could also be used uh, for virus uh, removal from water. So, so we found that these uh, cationic lignin particles could aggregate our, uh, by small viruses so they become large enough that they can be removed either by centrifugation or filtration. And we also found that it was not only an electrostatic interaction, but also interaction with the lignin. Uh, molecules, so both the anionic and the cationic worked, but the cationic particles were more efficient. And we have also uh, modified them with adsorption of chitosan uh, to make these stable microcapsules for deliver delivery of hydrophobic drugs. And this is, of course, something that uh, also interesting for the use of the, of the particles. So if you want to do these things, uh, how can we see whether this modification actually work? How much of the polymer, polyelectrolyte is absorbing on the surface? Well, for that, we need to use surface sensitive methods. And, and to be able to do surface sensitive methods, we need to have a representative substrate. And uh, so far, uh, before we did this research, there have been only uh, lignin substrates made from uh, dissolution of lignin. But I just tell, have been talking about how, much, how different these colloidal particles are compared to this uh, dissolved lignin. So then we thought that maybe we need to actually make a model surface out of these ones to be able to see uh, if we have a difference between these kind of models, model substrates and also to be uh, to modeling actually what we are doing uh, more closely. So we found that we could actually make this quite nice, well, well covered thin films uh, of, of these colloidal lignin particles. So here is again, like we, we again see that there's a, the, the ones from the aqueous acetone are a bit smaller than the ones from the THF. But this we could also be used then to see how the particle size is affecting what we are uh, seeing with the uh, quartz crystal microbalance. And we used uh, uh, polylysine as the anchoring. So because these are negatively charged, so with, with the polylysine is both hydrophobic and negatively charged. So we had, uh, that was the reason why we chose that one as an anchoring uh, polymer. So 
So if we study the contact angle, the wetting of, of these uh, uh, different type of films, you can see that um, uh, the smooth lignin substrate made from dissolved lignin has a quite high contact angle, around 60 degrees. Um, then when we have made the, the particles, so we have the uh, rough, rougher surface uh, uh, covered with the, this colored lignin particles, and they are also then having more of the hydrophilic uh, uh, carboxylic uh, uh, groups and also hydroxyl groups on the surface. We actually see that uh, they are quite hydrophilic. And of course, we, we measured the uh, contact angle at two different uh, relative humidities, and we could see that uh, if, uh, if the relative humidity is higher, we get even uh, lower contact angle. So this kind of showed that uh, uh, indeed they have quite different uh, surface properties and surface energy. And of course, this says also that don't, don't use these uh, particles as such to hydrophobize materials. So you, there are a lot of people saying that lignin is hydrophobic, so we just take lignin and then we to make something hydrophobic. Well, at least I would say neither of these are very good for that. But that's, uh, lignin is hydrophobic in nature, but not anymore when we take it out from the uh, from the black liquor, and especially not after making the particles. Okay, um, going into a bit more detail again with the, with the QCMD. So, with the, if you are familiar with QCMD, you know that uh, decrease in in change in frequency means uh, adsorbed mass. So, what we could see here is that uh, we can follow uh, the film formation when we uh, adsorb these uh, CLPs uh, to the polylysin uh, substrate. And what we can see is that uh, with the larger uh, particles, the change in mass is, is higher. So, well, they are heavier. Um, then we wanted to see are they, how do, does this affect, like are they very similar or not? So we, we plotted the dissipation as a function of, of frequency. This means that main, basically uh, we have here the same mass, adsorbed mass, but we have a higher uh, delta D for the larger particles. So they have a bit of a uh, higher slope there. And that means that they are more viscoelastic. So uh, whether it's then the particles as such, or maybe more probable that they uh, drag more water with them. So they are, that is what we are seeing. But otherwise, they, they like the, the absorption is, uh, if we go back here, the absorption is very fast. And so they, they have the similar absorption um, efficiency, but then a bit uh, like drag more water uh, with them, these bigger particles. OK. Um, Using these particles, there have been a lot of, like, we also, we had already published, like, uh, some statements about their uh, stability in different pHs, and we knew that, okay, at pH 12, they, they fully dissolve. Uh, but this was based uh, on DLS measurements. So what, what is happening at lower pHs? Now, now with this method, we can actually look into this a bit more in detail. And if we look here, we see that uh, uh, this line here is the lignin, uh, model lignin made from the dissolved. So you see that you don't have much of swelling or uh, you, you also remove that one at, at pH 12, but otherwise you don't see any effect. While these uh, particles, they, they, you have a decrease or increasing mass here at pH 10, and you also have an increase in, in dissipation here at the, at the pHs, like before they dissolve. So what, what is going on here? We, we should maybe look into this uh, uh, more in detail. So now if we zoomed into this uh, pH 8 and, and 10, we do see that uh, uh, we have some, something that we'd like to call swelling, but I will not call it swelling because I think that the 
particles do not swell as, as such, but they, they bind more water when, when they, uh, the carboxylic groups are, are uh, deprotonated. And of course, when they maybe also uh, some of the lignin at the core uh, or the surface might be uh, dissolved, so it becomes a bit more porous and, and can swell. And uh, this we could also see then looking with the AFM. But and uh, we also saw an eff effect of the lignin substrate on the ad like, uh, affinity of different uh, polymers. So now we saw that this cationic uh, lignin, for example, uh, has a more of that adsorbs to the colloidal particles compared to the uh, smooth dissolved lignin. So now I will spend the last minutes uh, to also uh, to tell you a bit about what uh, one example of, of how these particles can can be used. So this uh, uh, again, like how we can utilize the, the interactions to make a very strong like uh, cellulosic composite uh, films, and that were also had good water. Uh, they were waterproofs. So. Again, we focus on, on, the, on the interactions and make these multifunctional uh, cellulosic composites. And what we did was uh, uh, that we uh, had a hydrophobic polymer that we then uh, uh, make an emulsion that we're stabilizing the, the polymer uh, with, with the CLPs, and then we could uh, have a nice emulsion uh, having of these three components. So we have the nanocellulose, uh, the CLPs, and and the hydrophobic flexible polymer. And then uh, we can, when we form these uh, films, or we form very stable uh, emulsions to to start with, and then we can form films, and before. Uh, pressing them, you can here actually see that you have both uh, CNF and uh, particles on on this uh, emulsion droplets, and you get quite small emulsion droplets. And this uh, led to that you actually could uh, get very good both dry and and wet strength. So actually, most specifically would be like here that you you can see the the wet strength of this uh, of this. Um, composites are much better than pure CNF and also much better than uh, if you just compare, combine the two, the polymer and the CNF. And this is due to this, that the part lignin particles can, can act here as a like compatibilizer uh, between the hydrophobic polymer and the nanocellulose. So this is quite often people are using cellulose fibers or cellulose nanofibers to uh, to strengthen polymer uh, matrices, but if you have a poor interfacial interaction there, that actually doesn't work because, uh, and that's what we could see here that if we are using the particles, we can increase this uh, uh, and have a good, uh, good dispersion and good affinity between the CNF and the polymer. And of course, uh, the lignin brings nice uh, properties also so both uh, uh, antioxidant and uh, UV protection. And to conclude, I, I have shown you like that the interaction between lignin and solvent systems affects the CLP formation and also affects the resulting material performance. And these uh, CLPs could provide added value uh, to many bio-based composites. So thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.